To get started on the Soto Can Purse tutorial, you're going to need your choice of tapes, a staple gun with plenty of extra staples, a couple of D-rings, which is optional, a cutting surface, an X-Acto knife, scissors, maybe, and a ruler. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is find an object in your house that has a 5 and 1 fourth inch circle. 5 1 fourth inch across 5 1 fourth inch from height. Um, you can find something in your cupboard that may be round. You could use a roll of paper towels. Uh, just something that has that dimension that is um, circular. And then you're just going to trace it on a piece of paper and cut it out. Afterwards, you're going to make two duct tape sheets um, that are double sided. You can use crumb if you want the top and the bottom of the can bag to look more realistic. And if so, I suggest using clear tape to cover that up so that way the crumb doesn't fade over time. On the inside, you could use gray tape if you'd like. I happen to run out. So basically, you're just making two duct tape sheets that are double sided that is enough room to place your circle on it, trace it, and cut them out. Okay, so for this part, you need to get out your 12 inch zipper and you're going to cut a strip of tape that is 13 inches long. And if you're using chrome for your outside border for your lid, then make sure you clear tape this as well. You're going to peel it up and fold it over onto itself right in half. like that. You're going to take your 12 inch zipper and we're going to staple this. You also need your stapler at this point and you're going to face your zipper downward. You don't want the little part where you pull on it to be facing you. You want it facing downward. So you're going to go in about a half an inch off the side here and don't staple your little wings because we're going to take care of those later on. So right at the very beginning of your zipper at the top is where you're going to place your first staple right on the edge of your little uh, strip that you made. So there is your first staple. Now you're going to staple all the way down until you reach the very metal bottom piece here of, of your zipper. Do not staple these little wings down either and you'll have a half inch on both ends of um, your strip left over and that's kind of what you want. So go through and staple the remaining. Once you have your entire zipper stapled except for your bottom wings here, you're going to cut a strip of tape that is 12 inches long and you're going to cut lengthwise a half an inch. So you should end up with a 12 inch long strip of tape that is a half inch wide and you're just going to cover up your staples with that like that and you should have some remaining sticky at the top and this is how you're going to fold over your staples so if you've seen any of my videos before you know that this is always a technique that I use so you're going to fold the material or the, sh the strip of tape here along with the staples over and you're going to do that all the way down. And once again, when you put this strip down, you want to put it at the very, very beginning of your staples and at the very end of your staples. Once you have that down, make sure you press really good to make sure it stays on there. Okay, so now that we have our stapled zipper on, we're going to take a little round, the little round template you have for your top of your can, and we are going to staple it on there. So when doing this, you're going to once again make sure that your zipper is upside down, and you're going to take the edge of the tape, not the edge of the zipper. So the edge of the tape is what you'll line up to the side of your template. And once again, if you did chrome on the top, that's the top part you'll have facing up, zipper facing down, tape on the edge. Now when you place your first staple, you want to place it right where the, the staples began on your zipper, not at the beginning of the strip. So it'll be right where your strip of blue tape is, where it covered your first staple. 
that's where you're going to start stapling. Don't staple that little extra right here. Don't staple that. So you're going to start there by stapling it. And you're going to continue to do this until it wraps completely all the way around. There will be a big gap where it doesn't wrap around and we'll fill that in. Now you're going to take a six inch strip of tape of your chrome once again and you're going to clear tape that and then double side it. So you just want it double sided. It doesn't have to have it. It can have the rough edge. It doesn't have to be rounded or anything like that. So just double sided. Um, what we're going to do once we have already stapled the um, zipper around leaving that little bit of space at the very edges there. Not sure if you can see that but what we're going to do is we're going to staple this around the other side of the edge here. When doing it, we want to start off by stapling our edges. So that was where you were leaving that edge off. As you can see right here is where your staple or your zipper begins. So we're actually stapling it to that piece before the very beginning of the zipper. So go ahead and do that by folding it upward like this. So now that that's in place, we're going to start stapling this around. So you can just fold that back and start off stapling where you left off at. Okay, so now once you got to your end, once again we're going to staple these two ends together like that. So you're going to place a staple right here where these two pieces meet together. So just place a staple right there. Now those are stapled together and you still have that round perfect circle. So now what we're going to do is take the remaining of our strip of tape that we had earlier and we're going to just cut them in one inch um, little pieces so we can fold over our staples in a circular motion. So the first thing you can do is put your piece of tape on the side zipper, I'm sorry, the side staple where we stapled it at, fold that over and you can do the same thing over here on the seam side. Where the two pieces meet, grab one of your strips of tape, you're going to place it right where you placed your staple at and fold it over onto itself like that. Now you're going to continue to fold over your staples all the way around. So you're going to place it on there and fold it over. Try not to um, this is why we do smaller strips because we don't want to lose our, our circular form. So just try not to lose that form when doing this. You don't want it to be square, you want it to be round. So you're just going around your lid, covering up your staples and folding them over. And also don't forget to tape over your staples on that big, uh, the larger piece that we attached. And you can go back around if you'd like to make sure that it's extra secure. But as you can see, you have your circle on the inside. Okay, now that you have all of that attached and you have your zip or your uh, staples covered, you want to turn it inside the right way. So now you should have your zipper facing outside. <clears throat> and you should have, and this is ac actually a little extra long on the sides. And that's okay, you want it to be like that so when we go to attach it to the bag. So go ahead, turn it inside the right way, and set it aside. We're going to work on the body of the can bag. So in order to make the body, you're going to make a double-sided sheet of tape um, that is 17 inches long and 8 inches tall. So if you're doing a small, I'm sorry, if you're doing a, a longer can, a can that's normally taller 
than a say a Pepsi or a Coca-Cola can. If you're doing a can that is like a Red Bull or a Monster and they're actually taller than a normal size can, you can add it up to an extra inch on the top just so it's a little bit taller and it looks a little differently than the shorter fatter cans. So go ahead and make your double sided sheet. Now that you have your double sided sheet made, you're going to grab the bottom that you made earlier um, and you're, we're going to attach that to the body of the can purse. So the bottom is going to be attached by using your staple gun once again and you're going to take the, the round bottom part right to the edge and start stapling. But before you do that, make sure you have it facing downward. So if you did your bottom of your can chrome, then make sure that you have your interior looking upwards. So go ahead and just start stapling that all the way around the bottom or around the circle. And you're going to have to turn your circle as you go along. And continue to do that until it wraps around completely. So once you have that completely stapled on, um, you have these ridges right here on the side where your pieces are open still. And that's where we're going to come in here at the bottom where we have these two pieces remaining. And we're going to attach the two with a staple gun and staple it right again right against the edges of it all the way down. Okay, now you should have that edge stapled all the way down and your can bottom should be completely stapled all the way around. You're going to cut a bunch of strips of tape that are one inch little squares. So you can just take like a 10 inch strip of tape, cut it lengthwise and then cut the one inch squares. You may need more than that, it just depends on how much you use. So we're going to start stapling the, uh, I'm sorry, start taping over our staples for the bottom of the can. So you're just going to lay one strip of the square right on top of the staples and fold it over like we did before. And you're going to continue to do that until you've reached the whole bottom is completely covered. Okay, now that you have your entire bottom uh, stapled and you have your tape covering your staples, we're going to cover up the side that we stapled. So you will need a 9 inch strip of tape and all you're going to do is lay it half on and half off all the way down and you're going to fold over your staples. So once we have that all stapled and taped over, we're going to attach our top. So, when attaching your top, please make sure that you already turned it in the right way. So the right way would mean you can actually unzip it. If it was inside out, you wouldn't be able to unzip it. So that is how you know you have it the, the correct way. So the way we're going to attach this is where our seam is at, where we just covered with the staples with tape, we're going to take the, this larger section back here. This is where our back is going to be, the back of the bag. And it's kind of like back where the seam is going to be, so it's not going to be seen as much. So you're going to take that and push it into your bag. Until the ends of your staples meet. I'm sorry, not the, ends, the end of your zipper. The cloth part of your zipper meets around the edge. And that's where we're going to staple all the way around. So once you have that back, which is going to be a little bit longer than your cloth part of your zipper, that's fine. We're going to staple it right where it um, starts at. We just did that so we would make sure we had plenty of room so our bag wouldn't be squashed at the top. So once again, you're just going to push it in there. Make sure that this part, is, which is going to be the back of your lid, is right in the middle of where your seam is at. So push it in right there. And then we're going to start stapling at the end of the zipper, not the beginning where you unzip it at, at the end. We're going to start stapling that way so we can still undo our zipper before we turn it inside out. 
So to place your first staple, you're going to take the very end of the fabric that is the part of your zipper and place your first staple there like that. And you're going to continue to do that until you get all the way around. But before you get all the way around halfway through, you're going to want to unzip that. So make sure you have enough room to get your hand inside to pull out the zipper to, pull, to undo it. That's the best way to explain it. So just start doing that halfway, start stapling halfway around. Okay, so I have my zipper halfway um, stapled. So now you can staple your back onto it. And when doing this, you don't want to take it down to the ridge because you want it, you don't want it to be lopsided. So right where your zipper is, where you started your staples, that's where you're going to continue to staple it all the way around. So make sure you pull it up enough so you know where to start at. So you're just going to do that back part. So you're going to continue to staple all the way around the back side. Okay, so now what we're going to do is pull it out just a little bit around the ridge and undo your zipper all the way around if possible if it's just partially you should be able to get in there to still turn your bag inside out but I suggest trying to pull it out as much as you can to undo your zipper or pop up your lid as if it were inside out and finish unzipping it so now your zipper should be completely undone you're going to push this back in and continue taking your fabric where you left off at stapling it and stapling it, continue stapling it all the way around just the, the top of the fabric like, like that okay so now you should have your zipper completely stapled around the rim and it should be unzipped at this point and if you can see this very bottom here, I have not stapled the little tails down because this is something we're going to tape over in just a moment. So make sure that you have that completely unzipped and it's completely stapled around your bag. Now you're going to take a strip of tape and we're going to do this we're going to do the same thing we did earlier by cutting the little squares. So we can cut over the cover the staples without cutting the form of our circular bag, the lid. So you just cut the one inch and then go down lengthwise. No particular order, it doesn't really matter. You're just wanting to fold over your staples, staples and cover them. So you're just going to place your strip of tape inside of your, your bag, just covering your staples and then we're going to start folding it over. Fold, folding the bag and the staples over onto the other side. Like that. And you're going to continue to do that completely all the way around it. Okay, so when you have your all of it folded over and taped, you want to fold over this little tails that you have. Fold them over and just tape them down just so they're not in the way. So now that your bag is completely stapled, your zipper and lid is completely attached, you can turn your bag inside the right way by flipping it inside out. Okay, now you can see your bag has taken form. Your bottom is on, and it looks like a chrome bottom of a lid. I'm sorry, of the bottom. And then you have your lid. And now you should be able to zip this shut. Now we are going to attach the D-rings. If you're not doing the D-rings, which is optional, if you don't want to do the D-rings, you can um, just skip the part of making the little straps for the D-rings and you can just attach your strap directly to the bag. The same way we're going to attach the D-rings. So if you're doing the D-rings, you're going to need two 4-inch strips of tape 
and you're just going to fold them over onto itself halfway and then fold over the remaining to both of those. <clears throat> Now, you're going to unzip your bag, and you want to find out where your two sides are that are even. You'll place one of your little strips into your D-ring, and when doing it, make sure the seam where the two pieces of duct tape meet is underneath. You're going to fold that in half, and now we are going to attach it to the side here. So you want it to be below the zipper. You don't want it to be up higher than the zipper or you're going to have trouble opening and closing your bag. So make sure that the bottom part here is just right at the ridge of your um, bag here. And you're just going to staple it on. And you're just going to make a whole bunch of different staples right here just so you know it's going to be extra durable. Okay, now that you have that D-ring attached, you're going to just cover it up with a little piece of tape so you can't see the staples, and you're also going to cover the inside of your bag. And if you need to, you might want to hammer down the, the ends, the flat ends of the staples, just to make sure that they're not going to poke through the tape. And make sure you cover those with a couple of different strips of tape, just so that way it's going to be nice and secure. After that, you're going to go directly on the opposite side of the bag, and you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to place it right below the zipper. You want to make sure that it's not going to function, or you, you want to make sure your purse is still going to be able to function. So make sure when you're placing this, you're placing it where the D-ring is, where the uh, latch is not going to interfere. So you're just going to staple it down. I only staple it to about, th about halfway. Staple it all the way up, and then I cut off the remaining that I don't need. And then once again, you're going to cover that up with tape on the inside and the outside. Okay, after you've had your design all cut out and you have it on your bag, it's time to do the strap. It is. Um, so I usually go about 36 to 45 inches. I think 45 inches would be perfect for this. Um, you're also going to need two strips of tape that are two inches long so we can tape over our straps once we have them attached to the D-ring. So get your 45 inch strip of tape and you need to fold it in half onto itself. I'll try to show you here. My strap is extremely long. It's stuck to the wall. So you're just going to fold it onto itself in half like that all the way down and then afterwards you're just going to fold the sticky over onto itself once it's completely done. And then you're going to take your can purse and weave it into your, well not weave it, but um, yeah, put it through your D-ring. And while doing this, you want to make sure that you have your two pieces of tape that meet so it's not on the outside of your strap that's going to be on your arm. You want to uh, make sure it's going in that direction. So I'm just going to trim off this edge because I have a funky um, edge there. And then you just fold it over and take that two inch strip of tape. And you want to place it over your strap like that on the other side. Flip it over, you have your sticky side and the little part that folds over. And you're just gonna fold over the remaining sticky onto itself. So there's one. And now when you're attaching the second um, D-ring, you wanna make sure your strap is straight because if not, then you have to undo it all and all of that jazz. So uh, once again, I'm just going to trim off the very edge of this. And I'm going to make sure it's straight. Put it through the hole on the D-ring. Weave it up. Grab that two inch strip of tape. Place it right on the front. Flip it over here and fold over the remaining sticky. So now you have your soda can purse or a pop can purse, whatever you call it. Um, here in Michigan, we call it pop, but I know when I lived in Arizona, we called it soda. 
So um, whatever you want to call it, there it is, your can purse. Um, so as you can see, it looks really cool with the um, chrome bottom and the chrome top. And so now when you open up your can purse, you do have this little section right here where there is, it's not going to come unzipped, but it'll stay attached to your bag. So all you do is unzip your bag and you can fold it back like that to get inside of it. So I hope you guys had a lot of fun with this tutorial, and if you found it helpful, please click the like button, and if you're not already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe, and if you're on any other social media websites, um, check out my links down below in the description. I'll have uh, the link to my Instagram, my Facebook, and so on and so forth. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any comments or any concerns on how to make this, you can leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. So thank Thanks again, everyone. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.